morning and welcome everybody to this particular series called the Adult Educators Development Series. I had a very interesting, I had a very interesting message that says, why do you use the word adult, right? Because actually we do work with adults. Huh? Though some adults behave like children, that is a different story. Now, so thank you very much for being on this uh, particular session. It's a series session and today we will be talking about building, brand building for trainers. Why is that important? Now, um, so... Let me introduce myself a bit. My name is Isaac, Isaac Peter. I'm the founder and CEO of People Performance and we are a learning specialist. Now, I've been involved in the area of mentoring trainer, new trainers since 2010. And um, I, I think it's a very fulfilling journey for, for seasoned trainers to do that. And I've been doing that since 2010. And, you know, with this, with this lockdown, I, I thought what better way than us to do this um, over, over Facebook or live. And I thought, hey, why don't we bring more trainers in? Because I think people do want to hear how different trainers go about this. Uh, one, one of the things that I've learned over time is that there are different ways to go about doing the same thing, right? So, so today with me, I do have uh, a group of, of very experienced, highly regarded trainers from the industry. Now, these trainers may not be branding trainers except for one of them. But what we want to do is to be able to share real life practical experiences of trainers in building the brand. So this is not a training session. This is a experiential sharing session of our own journey. And what we would want to do is to be able to benefit those watching in so that you know, you know how to start. Uh, I think all of us would agree that the starting is always the most difficult part of it, right? You don't not just have challenges from the external, you do have challenges from the internal, how you're feeling and stuff like that. Now, um, I'm going to start first by letting our panelists introduce themselves. And, and, um, but before that, I would just like to be the first in this session to say congratulations to Jaga and Johan for being nominated in the top 100 Malaysian most influence, influence people on LinkedIn. And I think that's amazing. And I think that's something a lot of people coming in uh, wants to hear a bit more on that. So with that, I'm, I'm going to open this session and we are going to go alphabetically uh, in terms of self-introduction, right? So let's begin. Uh, Ian, you, you're obviously I, so... You know. All right. Oh, I'm, I'm the first one. Okay. Hello. Uh, first of all, hello to everyone watching on Facebook. Uh, it's great to have uh, this session together with all these amazing gentlemen. And uh, a, a little bit about myself is that I started my journey... Uh, 22 years ago in the first recession in my life. So I was working as a graphic designer and many years later, um, I have been serving clients who are from Singapore, Taiwan, Indonesia, uh, in the different companies that I work with. Uh, so doing graphic design, doing advertising and branding. And uh, for the past eight years, I have been actively um, in the training industry, speaking, training and coaching over thousands of amazing um, entrepreneurs, uh, senior management people, uh, business owners in branding. So what do I do normally is that um, I help them to define the wow factor in the brand and help them to stand out among the competitors. And uh, today is really, really amazing uh, um, experience to be sharing my uh, knowledge about branding to everyone and have a good discussion now with all the gentlemen out there. Right, um, Jega. Right, uh, thank you very much, Isaac, for this opportunity. And uh, good morning, uh, gentlemen, and good morning, viewers on Facebook. Uh, my name is Jagdishwar Manoharan. Uh, I was a former president of the Malaysian Association of Professional Speakers. I started my uh, journey as an engineer, and then uh, in 2001, made the shift to training. And I was actually a salesperson of training programs. And then later moved on to an organization that was conducting training. I worked as a trainer there for about four years. And in 2007, uh, my partner Zyro and I, we formed Cordia Training and Development. Um, it has been a wonderful journey. We specialize in the area of uh, uh, team uh, effectiveness and team culture and team leadership. Um, and uh, also the area of, uh, uh, we are known for using game-based learning or simulation-based learning. So we are the game designer, simulation designer. We design our own games and simulation based on clients' issues, clients' uh, challenges. 
I am also the member of the NASAGA, North American Simulation and Gaming Association, and also the uh, board member of the association. And uh, hopefully, uh, I'll end my term uh, maybe this year. Let's see how it goes. Thank you so much. And uh, Johan. Hi, uh, my name is Johan. Um, like Jega, I have a lot of uh, similarities with Jega. I started off my journey as an engineer. I was still as an engineer. I worked in manufacturing for a few years. Uh, 2008, I didn't really uh, like the, the manufacturing environment. Uh, and 2008 was the uh, uh, global financial crisis. And I decided to make a career shift. I've been working in product marketing um, in security industry. And then I, I, I moved to education industry. Um, I started off by selling training, so just like Jega in 2010. And I noticed that I felt like I, I really wanted to be a trainer. And since then, um, 2012, 2013 is where I really equipped myself. And 2013, I made the decision uh, to just resign from my job and started my training business. And I'm until now, I'm doing the same training and my passion is very much in leadership. Uh, I'm very much wanting to learn how great leaders are, uh, how they become great. And I'm also known in the market as someone who trains in colored brain communication. And I wrote a book um, called Communicasi Warna. So here's my book. Uh, talks about the colored brain communication, how our brain functions differently and how do we really communicate with each other in a way that we can understand each other so that we can reduce the conflict between each other that, that can, at the end of the day, build a better team and increase trust, not only for teams, but also for your personal life. Yeah, that's a little bit about me. John, thank you very much. Uh, another person I do need to introduce is my faithful uh, consultant, Shazwan Saleh. He's the guy behind the background uh, doing the linking between Facebook and Zoom because we are on Zoom. So thanks Shazwan for, for really supporting us, you know. Um, sometimes as trainers, I think it's easy to get the recognition because we're at the forefront. Uh, but recognizing there are a lot of people behind us that helps us to become successful. So Shazwan, thank you very much for being part of this. Now, um, now for those who have signed up on Eventbrite, thank you very much. And, um, and the benefit of really signing up is I will be sharing the context of the the people I'll be speaking with uh, on, my, on this particular series. So you're able to get in touch with them if you need to. Now, if you have questions to ask during this series, please feel free to type in the comment box your questions. Now, I would like to request that you uh, post questions regarding to branding, right? Because it's a one hour session and we want to be able to keep it tight and very specific. We have other five sessions, so look through the different topics and see if it's relevant. If it's not, at the end of the session, there's a questionnaire for you to fill up tell us what are some of the challenges that you are facing. Now, this particular session is done really for new trainers and people who's wanting to start out having fears and wondering how do I go about it. Right, um, what else? I'm, now, um, now, if you ask question and we do not have time to reply to it, uh, be patient, we will reply to you personally offline because I believe that it's important for us to get back to you on that. It's just that we are limited by the time on it. Now, um, so today, the topic that we're going to talk is branding. And along the way, you will see trainers. Guys, can we just carry up our stuff? Um, the reason why I'm, I'm asking this, so as you watch this, inter as this sharing, we will be raising up so we are able to interject with one another. Uh, it doesn't mean that there's a lucky draw time whenever we lift this up. So just to take note, right, in case you think the whole fear of missing out, you're wondering, what, what do I press? No. This is for us to communicate among us. Okay. Um, as the sharing goes, what, we'll have, what you will also see is that we may have different opinions and disagreement and that's totally fine because once again, there is no one way to do everything. And the four of us have very different journeys and the whole idea is to bring down. Now, with regards to this topic, branding, we all would agree that branding is important. The challenge often is, you know, what, what is it about? Why, how does it benefit? Is it long-term benefit, short-term benefit? Uh, how do I start it? Uh, what are the different things I need to think about it? And what's the first three steps I need to do? So those are some questions. Uh, usually when we are new in it, we will ask. And uh, sharing on branding is going to be specifically to the training industry, right? Now, this, uh, this sharing session is going to be done in a four, over four main themes. 
So um, if you're on Facebook, Shazwan would have put the four questions. The first question is, how does branding benefit trainers? So you'll hear all the different panelists share on this. Then the next question will be, at what stage in my journey should I focus on branding? We all know branding is important, but when should we start taking it more seriously? Uh, so we want to know that. Then the third question that the panelists have been talking about, you know, what are the challenges and considerations in creating my brand? Right? So once again, it's about thinking through the different issues, uh, what are the, so that you know, hopefully you don't make the mistakes that we did in our journey. And finally, the last question is, how do I get started to brand myself? It's about, that is the how-to. So hopefully at the end of the day, you'll get three, two to three pointers on how to get it started. So um, gentlemen, are we ready to begin our sharing? Right, yes. <laughs> okay, so question one, um, and, and this is, uh, let's, anyone can study it first. How does branding benefit a trainer? How does branding benefit a trainer? Um, who would like to go first? The first to raise up. Yes, Ian, the Star Wars guy. The Star Wars guy, all right. So branding is key in every stage uh, in our journey, and I believe that the main thing is to differentiate now, there are so many trainers out there. Uh, the last that I checked is about what? Um, HRDF has already 30, 33,000. Is it the right number? So yeah. if you have such a big pool of uh, trainers out there, it is an important thing that you, you differentiate yourself from the rest. For example, what kind of uh, modules that you have? What kind of profile that you have? And how do you actually um, plant these seeds to your... Um, training providers or to the to the clients that are looking for you or even when you're doing a public program do you have enough exposure for them to remember who you are so to me it's always nice to um, do this the moment you want to get into the business okay um, I took about eight years to actually form uh, this this particular brand of my own um, that is a branding coach and along the way there are a lot of uh, um, issues as well so I believe to, to get a head start is that you need to know exactly what subject matter expert are you first, who are your audience, and when you have that right, um, it's, it's, it's very easy. Like for example, three of the sales trainer are going into the same pitch, okay, and the training providers or the client will be looking through your profile. And uh, this happened, uh, just happened that your profile is not as impressive, okay, you have not been putting uh, work in branding yourself. For example, you didn't you didn't document all the projects that you have worked with, the clients that you have worked with, and also maybe some testimonials. And then immediately, first impression, you will lose out. Okay? Just imagine that someone has already done it, that the training provider or the clients already know who you are through the years of practice that you have planting, that you've been planting the right seeds in their mind. And when they see your profile came in, immediately you will get an advantage over the others. Right? So this is a very psychological thing. Um, when, when it comes to branding, it's all about um, doing the same thing, having the same message all over and over again so that people would know who you are and they can they see you as an expert, expert they, they hear you as an expert and they feel that you are the right choice when it comes to selecting you as the trainer. Yeah, thank great. you very much. Uh, what, I, what I understand from you and from a benefit perspective, it, you are saying it kind of put you ahead of people in the same industry, right? And uh, very interestingly, yesterday I was just writing a, an, a message on LinkedIn, but how do you how do you consider yourself an expert? And it was interesting how you talk about brand, one of the benefit of branding is it positions you as the expert. Correct, correct. It's yeah. just a simple concept when you, just happen that you are looking for an insurance agent and you know nothing about it, you're still new, right? Just uh, when your relative or your, your family member tell you that, hey, you should go for Mr. So-and-so, he is good. Then immediately that it will, it will open up opportunity for this particular expert already. You will have the confidence built in them already. So when the moment when you sit down and have a chat with this particular expert, ah, okay, definitely you're going to close the deal already. So that's how important to have uh, someone open the door for you, someone to introduce you first. If not, you'll be the one that do all these things first before right. everyone else brand itself. Thank you so much, Ian. I, thought, I think that's a good start for it. Um, Jaga, Johan? Right. Uh, thanks, uh, Johan, okay. Johan, okay. Johan, 
without okay, trust. Thank you, Isaac. <laughs> Okay, from my perspective, why the, the benefits of branding? Um, I I totally resonate with what Ian said. Um, to me, um, I call it a commodity. Um, when I first started, and I believe uh, a lot of trainers, when when trainers started, um, we don't really have our brand, and we haven't found our brand yet. And we try to. I I made that mistake that I try to be the best uh, in terms of delivery. I try to study how to how to come up with a very good modules, a perfect kind of modules, um, activities and things like that. And I'm focusing on more on the delivery part, but less on the branding part. And here's the thing. Um, one thing that I noticed is people only recognize I'm good after the program, which before the program is very struggle for me to actually sh tell them that I'm good. So because right. of that, because of people don't have this perceived value, uh, people will negotiate and people will like um, squeeze me until the end, <laughs> until <laughs> at the cheapest price. And after the program, and people say, "Wow, oh, you're so good!" But th the program is already over, the deal already done. So I think it is very important to give a perceptions that we are good even before the program. Because of, I've seen a lot of trainers, they did their branding very very well. And even though their delivery is not so good, maybe so-so, or maybe some of them are uh, even terrible, um, but they, they sell an expensive program and they really, they really uh, earn a lot from that. But again, there's another um, uh, disadvantage of that then because a brand is a promise, right? Um, once you screwed up and then the next time people will start to talk about it, people, will, uh, people won't hire you anymore. So that, that is a little bit of my experience until I really uh, put a little bit brand on myself. And, and one thing that I really love when you put your brand and if you distinguish your expertise as compared to the rest is uh, people start to, to call you when they think about that. So for example, I, I, I always uh, associate myself with the colored brain communication kind of modules. And if someone heard about colored brain and someone might not know me personally, but suddenly it will trigger them, hey, I know a trainer called Johan. And I got a lot of referrals from that. And yeah, uh, so I, I think that that's a little bit of the benefit that I enjoy by having a little bit of branding on myself. Cool. Um, Johan, thank you so much. I think that was very interesting because what you're talking in terms of when we talk about the way the brain works is front of mind, right? So if your branding is strong, you will be always the first people think about without even thinking about all the other details. Uh, the fact that you are the first on the people's mind, I think that's, that, that's an amazing perspective. Um, I resonate with you a lot in terms of trying to build a great product without going on branding. And um, I'm still going through that painful journey, right? Uh, in terms of, you know, you come up with a brilliant product and then you're wondering, and you, sometimes the question comes out, and I don't know whether Jagger will be able to answer this, is branding a, a, a fake thing? Because some people do say, uh, brand is fake, you know, it's just perceived, but there is nothing in it. Uh, and therefore, should I do it? Uh, so, Jaga, what, what's your take on the benefits of branding? Well, uh, I, I agree it's a fake if, if, if it doesn't fulfill what you promised. That's not promise. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's like, it's like this, you know. Uh, a, a package says something, and uh, you have had that, right? You, you, you buy something, it looks nice on the photo. And then when your real stuff comes in, like, like what in the world is this, you know? And, and that's what we do not want people to have. So for me, my take on this branding thing and why or how is it important is that there are many people out there, experts. Now, I'm, I'm not a brand expert. Huh? I'm just uh, qualifying or disqualifying myself in that sense. Okay, I, I just want to speak from a journey that we did. Journey of mistakes, okay? So, <laughs> learn from the mistakes is that uh, in the area of training is that uh, right. there are a lot of trainers are experts. They are really good at what they do. Like what Johan said, uh, we only found out after they deliver, okay? <laughs> so, question is this. That's the painful journey we all went through, right? It is, it is. Uh, after the training, they say, well, very good, very good. You also feel very good, like, very nice, you know, wow, so, so good and all that. Then the next pitch you go to and say, uh, so what can you do? And then you go back into your content, you talk about your content, you know, because there is nothing projecting that you are somebody for them to know you earlier. So this is where the painful thing started. You know, the, the, the painful stuff started is that when you see someone else in the industry 
who are branding themselves and then you know that hey, you know i can do a much better job than them you know what there's no mistake on their side you know they just know what to do so one thing is this being an expert is one thing how many people out there know that you are an expert for the area that you thought that you were an expert for you know i think the the issue here is how many people know about that before even talking to you so the moment you are already in the class or in the in the meeting room with the client and all that uh people should already know uh, yeah this guy is he's known for that like for example johan uh we have worked with johan for some projects and all that uh, we don't have to sell johan in calibring because the client knows that johan is an expert in calibring so that kind of recognition prior to that thing will help a lot so that we cut the chase of trying to convince people about whether we are good at it or what we can straight away go into talking about the solution rather than in the introduction so in other words yeah you will have to introduce yourself a bit but there is already a subtle introduction on their end they know you for what you are next for so that's that's my take on it so it's not fake if the expertise are really there Thank you very much. I think it's interesting because um, fake is a perception, right? So it's about how it's about putting yourself. And as you are sharing, I think it's it kind of give the Im imagery like when you are going to a shop, the first thing you look is packaging, yeah. uh, which stands out, right? You before you even open the content, uh, it's like when you go shopping on Lazada, then you know exactly what I mean, right? So so that's one part. And I thought what the other part, but from a benefit perspective, is that when you walk. In a client's office, you do not start from ground zero, because if your branding is there, you have already started from a level where people say, "I'm open to listening to you." But if you are to walk in the office and you are from ground zero, the first hurdle you need to overcome is why, from the client's perspective, is why should I listen to you? So I, th I thought that was, I thought that was a good way of looking at it. Um, as we come to close this question, are there any other pointers with regards to benefits that trainer? Yeah, there's something to say. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with uh, some of the comments made by all gentlemen because um, branding is not, it's not like doing magic, okay? If the product sucks, you cannot do anything about it because sooner or later you will find out. It's just the same as the expert, okay? Because uh, what we are talking about here is an intangible asset, okay? Something that we cannot see, cannot feel, cannot touch, but it's also something that is, um, carries a lot of weight when people already know you, people already um, know your values, it's easier to close. And then um, make, no, make no mistake, every single one of us- Ian, yeah, can I pause you for a while? A brand, okay? Even the matric, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so uh, I, I'm, I'm, you're, I'm gonna get you to continue sharing, but for those who have questions around the benefits and all, uh, watching us, just start sharing, asking your questions because after we kind of close this question, we will take some of the questions. All right. So Ian, please continue. Sorry to interrupt you there. Yeah, it's okay. So I talk about everyone is a brand because uh, makes no mistake, we all have a unique um, set of values and also experience. Just like the market who do who sell the best nasi lemak in the kampung, she is also a brand because uh, when she's not around, then people will think that oh, maybe today uh, the quality may not be as good uh, but the question is everyone is a brand but the question is are we branded when we talk about branded right just now uh, Isaac mentioned uh, the, the main thing is that when people think about this area do they think about you first and when you have that status then congratulations most likely that you will be the first in, in, in their mind to consider whether to hire you or not and we have the expert status like uh, Johan said like people won't be squeezing you uh, on your face and doubting you and make sure okay uh, you lower your price and all that like, because you you mean quality like. so that's the, the the part about uh, intangible asset and of course if you fail to deliver your promises because there's two part of it promises and also delivery and then your brand value will not be perceived as high okay your your promise is six star hotel but your delivery is only budget hotel standard and of course, you give them a big, huge gap of dissatisfaction. That will do even worse branding to you. Like people will start uh, talking bad about you. So in, in, it's a two-way two sort, I believe, uh, uh, doing, doing your branding. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, thanks very much for that. And um, I, thought it was, um, I thought it was interesting what you just mentioned about it is 
is when it comes to branding, right, whether you are building it or not, it's already there. So if we are not being deliberate about it, then mm. our brand will be organic and it may not go in the direction that we want. But if we start to deliberately think about brand building, then the benefit of that is we are projecting what we are wanting to go out rather than uh, just leaving it open to interpretation. Um, I, think, I think Johan also has some of this to share later uh, in terms of where, where we start and where we go. So, gentlemen, thank you for that. A very quick one um, from Facebook. Anybody has any quick question before I move on? Uh, Nadira Adam, Adam, Nadira Adam, or Namira Adam or Adam? Johan, is there Adam or Adam? Adam. Adam. <laughs> okay, Namira Adam wishes good morning to everybody. All right, so good thank morning, you for, for being part of this. Um, all right, let's, let's go to the next question. And the next question, so now we already established the benefit, right? So that's what we all shared. The benefit is, you know, you walk into the client's site with already a certain level of credibility. You, it allows you not to just fight on pricing. Uh, because when you fight on pricing, I think over time everybody suffers. Um, it also allows you to, to be the front of mind. So people will think of you first, right? I think what we can recognize and we can accept also with, with branding is, it doesn't mean that you have to be the best in order to start branding, right? And I think that, that leads us very well to the next question at what stage in my journey should I be focusing more on branding? Is it the beginning or the middle? Right? Um, who would like to start this first? Okay, I can take that. Yeah. Great. Uh, Next time, carry start... this, I'll penalize you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you start when you realize that you need to start. Okay, I'm going to be honest. Okay? I'm not going to give you some some focus focus answer. Okay, I'm going to give you the real real thing. That means, uh, if you are realizing right now, okay, I think I need to do branding. Then start now. Okay, uh, because sometimes some people are in the industry for about fifteen years, and only after fifteen years they thought about doing branding and all. So it's okay. There is no such thing as you know you're too late to start. The moment you realize you need to start, you just start uh, and and keep doing it. And how much you have to focus on it? I think. You need to, 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 to focus about somewhere equal to how much you focus on your expertise. But also another thing is don't get so, so caught up in it. In, in other words, this is one, one fear that I have when people say, but I need to focus on my branding, is I think you, you focus on, on key actions that you need to do in your branding exercise. And you just keep doing that properly. And you see, a branding is something that will take time to have an effect. It's not like sales, you know. It's not like you go in today, you do the sale, immediately you got the thing. Branding, certain branding exercise takes time for people to recognize and all that. So you got to have some level of patience there. But don't get so caught up in it that we forgot to build on our expertise. So I think the focus should still be on the expertise and do the brand on the side uh, as, as, a, as consciously do it. Not, not, I mean, when I say do it on the side, it's not like, let it just happen when it happens, but uh, put some conscious effort into certain things. Uh, so maybe you make a LinkedIn post on, on that area, uh, on your area of expertise. So you, maybe you write an article on, on that uh, thing. You share something about uh, that area. So come up with a few steps. This is what I'm going to do as my part of my branding. Exercise. But just don't get caught up. And, uh, okay, I'm not against uh, branding experts. Huh? Okay, so Ian, sorry. Huh? Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> listen to the branding experts. of doing it online. He can't strangle you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, listen to experts. I'm good to listen to experts. You know what I like about experts? They have taken time. That's their expertise. You know, you got to respect that. They have taken time to dissect everything and give it to you in a very systematic fashion. But you choose what you want to take. The challenge is sometimes some people say, oh no, you need to change your photo. You know, your photo is not this. And sometimes you get overwhelmed by so many info and then you get, you get caught, kaku, you know, like, like, so take what you think is necessary to do, do it, you know? So it's like a photo. If few people say, you know, you better change your photo, then probably you better change your photo, you know? Uh, something is not right about it. You know? So, so that's my, my take on it. Uh, the moment you realize it, start. Start okay. anytime. You can start. Thank you very much, Jagan. That um, so I, I thought it's, so. It, so Jagan, what you're saying is a lot more based on your sensing. Uh, where do you need to start? And I thought the point that you brought up is, don't don't try to learn too many to the point that you become uh, paralyzed. Yes. Yes. 
but to just do it paralysis <laughs> i don't know if that right. would exist <laughs> cool. thank you so much uh who's next who's next uh in terms of at what stage do you start focusing on branding uh johan oh, okay i uh, saw you wanting to raise it up already yeah <laughs> uh, I don't think that there is a, a definite answer at what stage because of... What about your journey? At what stage do you start focusing on it? But, but in my journey, um, I, um, I'm lucky because of when I get certification on calibrating communication, I, uh, it comes together. Uh, I think my, my, uh, my mentor, Atta Kamazi, he's brilliant, he's genius in terms of branding. So uh, I just leverage on that. Um, so you can see... Um, you, uh, I don't think there is a right or wrong way, but there are two ways of doing branding. You can develop your own brand, and I believe that Ian and Jaga maybe develop uh, their own brand, but I write on someone else's brand. So, um, for example, like there's a lot of trainers that specialize in NLP. Uh, NLP is not their creation, but they just overwrite on it. So I, I did that as well. And the reason why I, I'm not so much keen to branding myself on NLP is because of there are too many trainers on NLP when I started. So those who are the first movers may, may have that advantage. But when I started, it's already, to me, it's already overcrowded. But to the market, maybe not yet. But to me, it's already a little bit overcrowded. And I don't want to compete because I'm new. And I, I started to brand myself as Scarlet Brain Communication since, not really since day one, but at the very first year of me doing it full time. And But my circle already recognized me as someone who are expert in that. So uh, it can start as early as possible, as long as you know what really you, you want. And at the same time, um, you have to always listen and you have to re respond and react. For example, like I tried to change my branding a few times uh, because of, you know, again, Calibrin is not my product uh, and I wanted to create my own product. And there's a pro and cons, you know, uh, uh, leveraging on other people's brand or creating your own brand because of creating your own brand, it, it might take time. So, um, I tried to change my brand into someone who a leadership expert by shutting down the colored brain part. And I noticed at that period of time, I, I was a little bit like lost. Uh, I think the market didn't recognize me, the market didn't respond. And it might take a little bit time, maybe two, three years for me to really build that. And again, if you, are, if you brand yourself in a very like um, general leadership, so you are competing with like, uh, uh, in Malaysia, we have a lot of leadership guru, right? We have Roshan Tiran of Leadronomics. Uh, we have Eclipse that doing uh, leadership. So it's very difficult for you to compete. So you have to actually listen, uh, try to experiment, listen to the feedback. And at the same time, you do what you, uh, you, you believe it is. So um, decide on yourself and at the same time, listen to the response because of the response is actually how people perceive you. So I think that, that's a little bit on, on, my, on my take. Cool, thank you very much. Um, I like your point about leveraging on another brand. Um, I mean, honestly, that wasn't the most obvious thing to me. So I thought that was a good point, leveraging another brand. Um, yeah, so th thanks for that. I think it's, it's interesting because some, and perhaps the question that perhaps we can talk a little bit after this, um, should, we, should our branding be attached to a product mm -hmm. or should our branding be attached to us, right? We can probably come back over that. Uh, Ian, just just to kind of at what stage? Yeah. Okay. So the to answer the question, right? I this brings me back to my very first uh, speaking engagement. Do you, uh, gentlemen, do you still remember the first time you're being engaged and you have to step onto the stage? Okay. Let's let's go back to that. Huh? So that was actually eight years white. ago. <laughs> oh, right. So that's what, actually eight sorry years about ago, that. and I still have the brochure here. This is my first oh. ever speaking engagement. And just imagine being a newbie and having your pictures uh, on, the, on a pamphlet like this. It's actually make me feel very, very honored. Lah. So I was um, being invited to a um, design, designer's fair, okay, designer's fest or something like that at an art college. And that time, there are so many um, reputable speakers out there. There are designers from Singapore, from Taiwan, from Hong Kong. And me being a nobody, I get to appear next to a local celebrity DJ, la, which is Jack Lim. La. He's very famous in the, in, the, um, in the local industry, in the Chinese market. Um, and, um, and I immediately asked myself, how can I stand out from these trainers and these speakers? Because I, I, even though I have been in the um, branding and um, um, 
design industry for so long, if you compare the works that I've done, right, maybe it will not be neck to neck. There are those are the award-winning designers. So I, I don't want to focus on my um, portfolio and rather I, I, I talk about two things, okay? Motivation and branding. So how a nation brands itself, so I compare Malaysia and Singapore, how a company should brand themselves and how you too can apply the same principle on you to stand up. So that's how I got the, the, the idea. Like, because it's my first job, they say that there won't be any fees. But thankfully, at the end, I get a small, a small token for 500 ringgit for speaking uh, for one hour. So that opened up my mind that, okay, if I can speak like mediocrely and I still can get 500, think about the, if, if I invest my time and effort in doing this, what kind of benefits would it bring me, right? So that's it's actually my first one. It's, a, it's also the most important one. As you are starting out as a young trainer, as a young coach, you have to have a clear idea of your subject matter. You must be something that you're very passionate about, something that you know very well. And then you foresee in the future, maybe 10 years from now, that you want to become an expert to it. Lah. Because um, to me, right, branding is um, um, it's, it's something that we do every single moment. Okay, it's not that I must hire, you know, a branding guy, a guru, an agency to do for me. Yes, there's also branding, but it's, it's like you are engaging an agency to do for you. But with or without this, every single moment, we are building our brand, whether we like it or not, how we treat people, how we deal with our training providers, how we deal with our participants. Every single moment, we are planting these seeds into their mind to help them to define uh, whether we are the right expert for them or not. And when we are doing this, we don't instruct them to believe that we are the one. We, we, we influence. We use it uh, the way that we influence. So be, be mindful of what we put online, you know, what we share and how we deal with people. Because at the end of the day, people will form an impression uh, towards you. And that impression is actually your brand. Wow. Okay. So, right. So the, the impression is the brand. Okay. Cool. Yes. Um, and... So as, as you guys share the story in terms of your journey, where you start, um, how um, Joha was talking about trying to switch and then, and then Jaga was talking about the really in terms of start when you need to start, right? So, so for the new trainers and facilitators out there, um, let's share some of our journey more as much as specific as possible. What were some of the challenges that you faced when you said, okay, now I need to start building my brand? What are some of the challenges you faced as well as what are some of the considerations you had to make in terms of I need to do this and therefore I'll lose that, I need to do this. What are the considerations uh, in building your brand? Right? Um, Johan, you want to start first? Yeah, I start first. Um, I think at the very beginning, I have this debate with one of my friends. Um, he talks about uh, he, 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 he's a firm believer at that time that you should not brand yourself. You should brand the company because of at the end of the day, you want to sell the company. You want to make, uh, <laughs> you, you don't want to work in the business. You want to work on the business. You know, all this business philosophy that uh, <laughs> all, uh, all these people uh, talk about. Um, and I disagree with that because of I said that no 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 look at um, experts in the in the in the Western countries uh, they brand themselves uh, first for example like uh, Stephen Covey you can say Robert Kiyosaki or even uh, T Hub Acre these people they brand themselves first um, Dale Carnegie um, and at the end of the day even though they, they are already long gone they still have their um, legacy and people people run their program people run their business seven habit uh, is is actually um i think until now is still running um so and even though we have debate i personally believe that we should brand ourselves i should brand johan as a brand and i uh, he's he he at that time he he firm firmly believe that he should brand his company but uh, i think now nowadays is already um uh, terbalik lah. uh, nowadays i i brand a little bit more on the company because we are doing corporate training we brand a little bit more on the company and johan second and my friend <laughs> he brand himself first and the company uh, i don't know uh, keep on changing company 
Uh, so my point here is sometimes you might argue about whether this is right, this is wrong. I think there's no right or wrong on doing it. And you can just shift uh, along the way as, as and when because of when you, you first started, um, what you value might be different as compared to when you are already at um, maybe 10 years down the road. Um, maybe at the very beginning, you just think about uh, your rice bowl and along the way, you're talking about developing community. So you need to develop a community brand. Um, for example, like I, 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 and I think a lot of things can be brand, uh, not only you. Uh, of course, you can have your personal branding. You, have, you, you, you might have your company branding. You might have your modules branding. You might have your product branding. Uh, for example, like my book, Komunikasi Warna, is a brand on itself right now. Um, when we talk about Komunikasi Warna, we can say that we have this community of Komunikasi Warna. So people who already read my book, um, they wanted to get together, just discuss about uh, some of the things that we, we discuss in the book. So that itself is a brand. So you can have one brand as a company brand and you can have multiple brands. And I tried to start, it, uh, I, I tried to start a few uh, uh, sub, sub brand. For example, like I, I, I started some uh, platform called Leadership Insight. So the purpose of that is actually to build a community that wanting to talk about leadership because I, think, I believe that in Malaysia, not many people talk about leadership except at the, at the corporate level. At the sea levels, yes, they talk about leadership. But the, at the grassroots level, level, we don't talk a lot about leadership and we can't really uh, progress as, as a nation if we don't have leaders at every level. So that is what I, I truly believe in. Mm -hmm. And somehow, it's a little bit uh, struggle to just build that brand. So um, the brand doesn't die off, but it is like something to me is half-baked brand. Um, yeah, probably I'll, I will revive that brand again, but yeah, that, that's a little bit about my journey about branding. Um, yeah, my take, there's a lot of things that can be brand and it, it should be what is your priority at that moment and what are, what are the end results that you want and then you strategize your brand according to, to your, your, your direction. Yeah. John, thank you very much. You have answered. Uh, so, Captain Shan, Ask the question in terms of you know brand company or brand self, and you have answered it. Uh, Rani and uh, Ravin and Anu also fully agree in terms of that. Uh, you also brought in another dimension in terms not branding as a whole, but you have broke it down in terms of company brand, personal brand, product branding, and I think that's something that we all need to think about it. Uh, some of us doing it more consciously than others, right? So thanks for your take on that. Um, um, who's next? Who likes share next? Uh, Gina yes. asked a question. So, my conditioning. Uh, Sorry, Ian. Jaga raised it up. Oh, okay. <laughs> raised it up first. <laughs> okay. Uh, brand. Uh, I agree with Johan. Uh, I think as trainer, uh, this is a conversation that I had with my NLP guru last time because I was trying to say, how can we take my business into systemizing and all that, you know? Because, like, Johan also, we also attended all the courses, you know, say that you have to create a system in the business and the business will start running on its own. So he, he told me, okay, Jika, um, your business, what you're doing, is one of the most difficult, if not impossible, to systemize and run without you. So I said, thank you very much for that, uh, <laughs> that truth, you know. But the reality is this, we are the business first. So I think it will start with you first. And like Johan said, there's no right and wrong. As time goes on, you will start seeing that how it progresses and you will know whether to transfer the branding to the company or to keep the brand to yourself. Okay. I give you an example. Huh? Um, uh, what is that? Uh, let's look at our local uh, uh, trainer, uh, Dr. Lauren Chan. Dr. Lauren Chan started a company called PDL. And recently, he they decided, not recently, a couple of years back, he decided to just disband the entire PDL setup. But clients are still calling him, for him. And he is okay about the fact that after me, maybe PDL might not go on. And he, it's perfectly all right with him. And there are many trainers I've seen uh, overseas. They are very good in their content. So I told them, you know, what happens after you? So, well, after me, there are others who will take over. I don't have to have my brand going on. No, my brand serves me. 
and I just want it to serve me. And that's perfectly normal. So if anyone comes to say, no, you must brand the company, it must go on after you, that is their purpose, not yours. So you need to go back to your purpose. I like to address this thing about uh, what uh, Gina Pan asked about, uh, uh, find your brand or let the brand find you. Oh, this is a very interesting question. Okay, I'll just tell you my journey. Huh? I was confused about what am I or who am I? You know, like the Jackie Chan movie, you know, go up the mountain and shout that, who am I? You know, <laughs> so, so I really do not know who, who, who am I, you know. Uh, one moment you want to do this, then you want to do that, then you want to do this. So if you are having this thing of confusion, perfectly normal. Everyone who, who, who is out there, who's very clear about their brand, went through that journey also. So initially, I went out there to start creating a brand. I wanted to create something. So that was the journey. But eventually, what happened was, the market started telling us who we are. And I think, listen to the market. Listen to the environment. The environment will soon reveal who you are. And that is much more stronger because that is what is coming out of you. That's your DNA without even you realizing it. You're just projecting that DNA to people and people are going to tell you, you know what, you know, I think uh, Jigar, you, you're good in this area. I think you guys are good in this area. I give my personal thing. Huh? Simulation and game was not our branding. We did not start off with that. We created games and simulation to differentiate from other team builders out there because there are so many team building companies, they're creating thing and all the games are like, oh, man, same old games and all. And the worst situation I have is that when you go for a meeting, they start judging you based on the slides. They say, oh, ini ya, activity ini, kita dah main ini, ini, ini dah buat ini. Oh, this one, uh, last year we did, right? The trainer did something like this. Huh? And you know what? You can go in and give your bull whatever you want, you know, like, no, but I debrief it differently, you know, but the way I bring the lesson is different. Hello, they have seen it. Okay, so don't bull yourself on this, okay? So we said, okay, let's differentiate. Let's show them on the slide something that they have not seen. So that's when we went about creating Eastern Trading Company, Temple of Doom, Tagiator, um, uh, Grazel Farm, all the different products that we created. All of them are simulations that we created. And there's a new one coming, Anhill Cove. It's already done, completed, waiting for printing only. Uh, MCO is holding us back, okay? So uh, <laughs> print is not open. So... What happened was, as we were using the simulations for a team building setup to differentiate, one of the bosses of the company, uh, she's head of customer service, she looked at it and she said that, you know, Jaga, this thing, can we do this for an in-house? Can we do this for a classroom? Now, the rule that I've learned last time is, whenever anyone asks you anything, say yes and then figure it out. Okay? So just say okay first and then you go and think about it. So yeah. he said, yeah, yeah, can be done. Then I asked Zerul, Zerul, can I? Said, hey, of course, I can, uh, you can, can definitely do this. Okay, then we started. That's how our simulation from team building went into classroom. And that's how the brand of simulations became a thing. And people started calling us based on simulation. So today I get a call, is that, hey, look, uh, my team is having this issue. They are having this problem. This is the situation. Do you have a simulation now? Now, I did not design this. But we listened to the market. The market told us what to do. And we just went on the flow. It's like a river. You know? Don't fight the current. Don't, don't try to fight the current. Flow, flow. Find the flow. And the flow, once you take the flow, the view is great. Okay? That's, that's my take on that. Listening to you, I'm in a very zen state, you know. So I just go with the flow kind of thing. Mm, Yesterday was okay. made a call, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but that's interesting. That's interesting because... Um, like for me, I, I'm a, I like to do things very deliberately and consciously. But what you're saying is, while you're doing it, listen to the market. Um, there could be another extreme where you don't do anything and you just listen to the market. Uh, so, so, so that was... So Ian, yes, yeah. you have something. Let's, sh sh let's hear from you. Yeah, I want to add on to what uh, Johan and Jega have mentioned just now and especially um, someone who mentioned uh, let the brand find you and, or, or you find the brand, right? So this is yeah. my answer to it. Nowadays, um, um, it, the question is, okay, the question is, if you don't position yourself, guess who will do it for you? It's the market, right? So every now and then, I still do this exercise by having an idea about how I want the market to perceive me I, I still keep on doing the same thing as asking the market how you perceive me. 
So this is what I normally do. Every now and then I'll do an audit about myself. So I will throw a question of uh, uh, how do you feel about me? Okay, if I'm doing an FB live, uh, what, what contents generally you will, uh, you will think that I will do? You know, things like this. Uh, this is number one, to reassure that I'm going the right direction and also to, to um, have a discussion with my audience because like I said, um, your brand is not what you say it is, but it's rather what other people say what it is. So to have this um, ongoing survey about who you are in people's mind, that actually put you in the, the, the position whereby you know how, what, what have you been doing right? What is it that you need to do to become that particular expert in, their, in the people's mind? So, John, yesterday we had a discussion about you know, whether or not uh, the efforts that I put in, but people still perceive me this particular way. So, what should I do, right? Of course, you don't want to fight with your audience, right? You want to say that, hey, I'm this expert. I'm, no, I'm not the way you think I am. You, know, you certainly don't want that because like Coca-Cola is still spending hundreds of millions doing survey and they still perceive themselves as a 16-year-old. So that's why having an idea about um, doing it consciously, of course, you want to influence the perception, um, but at the same time, also finding a way to understand how the market feels about you, I think that, that will have a, a bridge like, of, of uh, how you perceive yourself versus how people perceive you, and that would definitely give you the right answers a lot of time. Thank you so much for that, Ian. Yep. You're, you're very right. Once again, I think, and I think we are in a very interesting industry where everybody, there's a general feel that everybody thinks they know exactly what's going on or know exactly uh, who they are kind of thing, right? But, and therefore, listening becomes very important. Um, there are some questions coming up. Uh, Jaga, would you like to take the first question? Yeah, this question is from uh, Namira uh, about using tools to gather from the market. Okay, I'll tell you how we did it, okay? Our first year of business, we did this. We sent out a survey to all the clients of following year. Okay, uh, we just asked them a few questions about what they want. Uh, you know, what are they looking at? What what's their level of satisfaction in their service? And then we gave a verbatim space there to ask them, what did you like best about the way you, we do business? Okay, and generally there was one pattern of answer came in. So that's one thing good about having some level of verbatim tool in that because you want to gather. And if few people are saying the same words or similar, you know what? You just discovered something about yourself that you would never be able to discover in any other way, all right? One other thing they told us is that it's easy to do business with you and you guys are very fast in making some changes and response. So we took that. And until today, doing ease to client is a paramount thing. Everything we do, we, we, we take ease of client is very, very important. And that's how we keep some clients for many, many years, right? Uh, the other thing is you can do is, uh, it may not be a formal thing, but have conversations with people. Okay, have conversation, ask people, you know, okay, what, what do you, do? you know, some people are not going to be honest. They, they, I'm not to say not honest, they just don't want, don't feel comfortable telling, but there are people who will tell you. And also listen to the signals. Signals is that as you're doing it, you know what, I like the way you explain that part. That is a signal. Pick on that signal. You know, I like the way uh, you made something so complex look so easy. That's a signal. That's something telling you about you that you, you do not, uh, we might not realize about it on, on, uh, about us. So you can use tools, simple surveys will work. You can actually have conversation and evaluate from the conversations. That, that will work as well. Thank you so much. Uh, and okay, so that, that's interesting. It's, it's really about listening to people. And not just uh, thinking about ourselves, right? Johan, um, Johan, you have a question uh, from Ravin. Yeah. Yeah, you, uh, you might want to just read out the question and then share with us. A uh, question from Ravin. I have read that color plays an important part of your branding to show your visual identity and communicate your company's mission. Uh, how significant is this, uh, your take on that? Uh, I, I think Ian might have a better answer uh, in terms of brand, colors in, in terms of branding. Uh, but I, from the, the, the limited knowledge that I have, uh, I think colors really plays an important role in stimulating the mood of um, the, the whoever looking into it. For example, like um, in education, I think blue is the color of education. 
Um, and I can see that a lot of uh, companies um, are actually in, in education line is actually blue and red. I don't know why, but this is my, my initial observation. You look at, for example, like HRDF, uh, HRDF is uh, having uh, red and blue, JPK, all these organizations, they have blue and red. Even uh, my ex-employer, uh, Multimedia University, red and blue. And initially when I designed my logo, I don't have, um, actually I'm looking for my old logo design and new logo design. I, I, I use the same color at the very beginning. Um, somehow, even though at the very, very early stage, first year of doing it, uh, maybe a few months of doing it, I, I, I pass my name card and people say, oh, your, your company looks familiar. I said, no, we, we, we just started <laughs> a few months. Um, so color really plays an important role because of it anchors people uh, to something that they are familiar with. Uh, but a few years after that, I really get help from some branding expert. And then um, that person actually redesigned our logo, make it like looks nicer. So yes, we still use blue and okay, here's my, my new logo. Uh, blue and red still. But the blue is like a lighter blue and uh, I love the combination of the blue and red because of the blue is not like the, the, the old blue. Um, this is what I call the, the, the old version of blue and the newer version of blue maybe in, um, from my name card here, I, I can see. Uh, the blue is like a little bit lighter blue. So that gives a, a fresh fresh perspective. So, so to me, it's give a fresh perspective. And I think um, one thing that I, I love when I have conversation with expert uh, like Ian, Ian mentioned a very, a very good point of auditing, right? Asking people. Uh, so this is the thing that I never done. I, I just assume based on people's reaction that I really need to do a brand audit, what people perceive my brand. Uh, for example, like this color, what does uh, makes you feel? I think that that's something that I would love to do after this. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, Ian, anything to, what's your yeah. take? So something to add on, uh, I think this is uh, asked by Evan. Evan, yep. um, the current pandemic, pandemic has exposed trainers to the need for stronger online presence and branding. What are your thoughts about the rise of these online speakers, trainers, and the methods for personal branding? Now, um, uh, the question I want to ask everyone is that over the past 50 days, what have you done to actually add value to yourself? Now, a lot, I, we, we can see that a lot of people are coming out of the comfort zone to do self-introduction videos, doing Facebook Live and all that. And some of them are actually focusing on cooking, you know, uh, TikTok dances and all that. But six months down the road, how can people still remember you? So to answer to that, I actually have been uh, very uh, active in producing my own content. It is the most um, productive time for me in the past 40 days. I have churned out maybe 20 over content, uh, more than the last five years combined. So why do I do it? Because I have something that I have been procrastinating. I'm not sure about you, but trainers sometimes, we want to work the best for our clients. Sometimes we forget our, about our own self. So for example, you, you, you think you, you, you are the expert in sales. Are you doing enough, enough sales activities for yourself over the past 40 days? If you're an expert in uh, motivation, have you been you, utilizing your strength, your gift, to actually motivate people to do more, to be more. So this is what I see, how you can use your social media, online presence to actually make a difference because um, now that the market is slowly open and we, we already foresee that the next six months is going to be slow. So are we pivoting online or not? Are we adapting to the wave like um, Jega has mentioned? Are we... Are we following the flow or are we still against the flow and, and we want to go back to the good old days, chances are we won't be having the same market uh, uh, nowadays already. So my, my take for this is that uh, when I was doing this content, right, what I do is that every now and then I send material to my clients, to my participants to actually say that, hey, I've done this, so this can be useful for you. So to, to carry on building the perception in their mind, it's not necessary have to sell, sell, sell. But a lot of times, value and in terms of brand building, right? It's a long-term journey. So the more you do, the more you add on to the perception, to the experience, and then people would appreciate that. So this right. is my tip for that. Thank you so much, Ian. Um, I'm just looking at the time. So time check, we are 11.02. So we've got the third last question. Let's make it succinct. So in terms of 
definite steps, right? Like maybe three things I need to do or two things I need to do or one thing I need to do. Uh, let's go in a round robin. Jagger will start first, Johan, and then followed by Ian. Um, how, how, how do I start? I think some of the things that you already mentioned already, but uh, let's make it succinct. Jagger. All right, I'll put it in very simple three uh, a triangle model, okay? Uh, your brand should first be your passion, okay? Something that you're passionate about. You must be passionate about. I'm talking about training subjects, huh? so I'm going to be straight to the subject. You must be passionate about what is that that you're speaking on, what is that you're training on. Secondly is that, is that a natural talent in you to speak about that, that area? Because sometimes we can be passionate about leadership, but it's not a natural talent. Okay, we are going against forces that are much more stronger than us. So that might not be it. So find a passion, find a natural talent. My own thing is our passion was actually simulation and game. Our natural talent is the moment I can listen to somebody uh, saying something, both Zyro and I have this, you know, as we are hearing it, hearing it, pop, 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 one idea will come and then we can, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is how the game is going to work and all that. The frame will immediately come. That's a natural talent. So I'm just riding on my natural talent. That's not your natural talent, but you have a natural talent in you. The third one is, can you make money with that much? <laughs> you know, no, no point. I'm very passionate about defensive driving. You know, I have a talent for it, you know, but nobody is buying defensive driving programs. You know, so third one is, you have money. Uh, will people spend money on it, or can you sell that? So that's all. That's my area. Jaga, thank you very much. That's very practical because uh, a common question is monetization. How do I monetize my passion? Um, and that is a topic by itself, but thank you for that. Uh, Johan. Okay, for me, first thing that you need to do is actually understand your purpose. Uh, what do you really want out of it? Uh, and then, then only you design brand that actually align to your purpose. Um, second, um, I think that um, you, uh, one, one quote that I, I heard from someone, um, brand every shit out of it. Um, I, I noticed that a lot of trainers in really? it, uh, excuse the language, but <laughs> but uh, that that I am saying as is. Eh? Um, I, I've seen a lot of trainers. They don't really brand themselves enough. Uh, for example, like in our training program, we brand every single thing, including our posters. There is a brand on our posters. Even a, a cut. Uh, for example, for activities, we printed out cut right uh, for uh, informations or anything. We put. We always put our branding. Uh, either black and white or either color, always have branding everywhere. Um, that will make people remember you better. And uh, even, in, in fact, um, our internal thing, right? Uh, so, for example, like, um, this is my, my personal productivity planner. I, in fact, I, I put my, my branding for my own internal stuff as well. So, you know, uh, you have to be very, very uh, brand every, every single thing. Okay. Um, and, and thirdly, you just have to leave your brand. You can't really just come up, ask consultant to develop branding, pay them uh, money and develop and then you are not leaving it. So leaving it is actually makes you congruent. So you really leave your brand and that is your promise to your client. That is your promise to the world and just be congruent with it. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, to the purpose and brand everything. I think that's an amazing way to start. Uh, Ian, your take. All right, so uh, to end this session, right, I would like to uh, mention three, three, key, uh, three key points. Uh, um, if you are a sales expert, make sure you utilize your sales skill to become your best testimonial. Because right now, uh, even though you're starting uh, in, a, in a very beginning stage of your training journey, right, or even halfway through, or even you're, or even you're an expert or veteran already, what I would like you to do is that always um, have yourself to be your best testimonial because you should be a living proof of what you do. Okay, for example, your fitness coach, make sure your body look nice and then you have a wonderful uh, um, physics and then without people having to question you about your ability. So that's number one, be your best testimonial. Number two, have a, um, a way to leverage on other trainers, uh, resources or, or audience. So like today, this is a very, very good um, exposure for every one of us. We can we can all tap on each other's uh, um, audiences to actually uh, reach out to more people. Okay, so as you're starting out, this is also a very good way. And in fact, you can add more value to um, to the audience as well. And the third thing, don't strive on to be the best one because 
how, how do you actually judge the best one? In Singapore, it's, it's, um, there, 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 there need to be a, a backup of what you claim in your app. In Malaysia, you can claim that you're the world champion of everything, or Olympic gold medalist of everything. So what I'm trying to say here is that you have to find your secret sauce, okay? The way that you can stand out, the only solution that you provide, once you have that, right, you would be the most sought after person because in the whole market, you are the only one who has that particular thing. So don't strive want to be number one. Be the only one and people will be drawn to you. And, and that's why you are the branding guru, man. Thank you very much for that. Um, we also explained my conundrum living and, and uh, working in Singapore and trying to do things in Malaysia. The tension is just there. Um, gentlemen, once again, um, really thank you very much for this time. We have exceeded the time of about eight minutes. But I think the sharing was amazing. Um, folks, uh, for, for the audience listening in, thank you very much for being with us. So the next session will be next week, 12th of May, and the focus will be a first step into the training work. We'll be having an all-ladies panel, because this time is an all-males panel, right? Mm-hmm. It'll be an all-ladies panel, and uh, you, we are going to get trainers who are new in the market, and they are going to share with you the journey that they took. So please stay with that. There is, now, you will be getting a survey link, and I would really appreciate just like some of our panelists today talks about getting feedback. Please complete the survey so that we are able to understand what went well and what we improved and what other topics to bring to you. Now, um, gentlemen, thank you so much for being uh, on the session and I really, really appreciate the sharing, especially your real stories and your journey. I hope to the audience that this would alleviate some stress that you have as you think about branding, as well as um, we'll be sharing you their contacts. Uh, feel free to connect with them to get more. Yes, Jaga. I just want to say something here uh, because it's the trainers thing. Uh, some things that I've noticed among trainers is that uh, just go back and look at your Facebook posting and your social media posting in the last one month and you read and see what kind of message you're putting out to the public because I, I'm a bit, a bit okay, I'm, I'm speaking from my heart, huh? I'm a bit upset with some trainers you are putting messages of despair, you're putting a message of denial, you're putting a message of like, you know, things are not really going well, you're cursing, you know. I think it's okay to criticize or critique, but there is a way to do it in style. I made the mistake, go back to my 2013 uh, posting on Facebook, you'll find the stupid version of me putting political stuff and all that, you know, so, so we all have done that. But 2013 was different, the scenario was different, the climate among people were different. But today the climate is a little different. But some of them who are posting things which are like against the government or what, please be careful because today it's a 50-50 game. Nobody is holding the majority. So your clients, we do not know which side of the fence they are in. So be careful about what you post and make sure that it's a posting that uh, keep it neutral uh, and, and keep it hopeful. Okay. If you want to vent out, you vent out, but just put only me. So only you, you can see it for yourself. Yeah, thank you very no, much. No, 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 friends. <laughs> no, no. I, uh, you know what's interesting? Because what Ian said earlier on, um, you are branding yourself every moment. So if those who do that, there is a certain brand stuck to them, right? And perhaps their challenge is they may not even be aware that's their branding. I think so once again, um, for trainers, facilitators out there, you're watching this. Um, I think Jagas' advice was amazing. Please go back and reflect, not so much about what you, your intention is, but what you have been putting out there. Thank you so much for that. Uh, With that, that's the end of today's show. If you are interested, please join us next week, same time. Please, once again, please fill up the survey, the survey monkey uh, feedback, so we will know what else to do to improve this. With that, um, thank you very much, everyone. I hope this has been a uh, fruitful journey. And please do the likes and the thumbs up, whatever on Facebook that you can click, so we can feel the love from you. (laughs) With that, thank you everybody and see you next week. Thank you so much for joining us.